And now we're getting to a good one. This is one of my favorites, rosemary. Couldn't live without it. Sticking my face in a rosemary plant is about the happiest thing I can do. Rosemary, uh, also known as the rose of the sea or herb of remembrance. It is, again, great for your digestive health and digestion, really good for sort of keeping all functions of your body working properly. So it's a carminative, it's a digestive, it's an alterative, high antibacterial properties, antifungal, antioxidant, but it's one of its specialties here in terms of specific to this herb is it's a great circulatory stimulant, uh, especially circulation to the brain. It's a generalized circulatory stimulant, but also it's a rubefacient, which means if you apply it to just a small area of the body, it's going to increase localized circulation there too. So you can use it on a broad scale, whole body through taking the plant in, you know, ingesting it through your food or as a tea. But then you could also do it topically on a specific area if you've got some swelling or an, or an issue like that. Wonderful antidepressant properties. Don't need to convince anybody of that. I love it. I always have a rosemary plant around. One of my favorite things to do with rosemary is make what I call the mind brightening tea. I like to take equal parts peppermint and rosemary. Some wonderful additions to this is ginkgo. Ginkgo is wonderful because it also helps increase blood flow to the brain and stimulate the brain and kind of perk you up in that way, in a non-caffeinated way. And so that's a really wonderful addition to this blend of rosemary and peppermint. And then let that steep. You could let that steep about five minutes and drink it hot. Or again, you could just let it cool naturally and steep longer and then use that as an iced tea or kind of a warm tea if you, don't, if you don't want to chill it down all the way. And also, sometimes I like to add a little bit of green tea. And that's a really nice mix in here too. So those are some, some great recipes for mind brightening tea. A wonderful one to do in the morning if you don't drink caffeine. Or sometimes I like to do it in the early afternoon if I'm feeling a little sluggish and I still have a few hours of work ahead of me, I'll do that in the early afternoon. It's really wonderful. Internally, rosemary again is good for coughs, colds, flu. It is a circulatory and nervous system stimulant. And here is another unique one. It really helps reduce a stomach ache, specifically when it's related to psychological tension. So again, this whole like mind um, calming, but you know, antidepressant, anti-tension factors sort of all coming together and, and helping with a physical ailment. It stimulates liver and bile production. It helps relieve headaches in general. It helps with your memory. Also with its circulatory stimulant aspects, it helps stimulate metabolic activity, relieve any symptoms of a sluggish circulation. So a nice one to add into your diet or your daily regime if you have a tendency towards cold hands and cold feet because it helps perk up the circulation in your body, keeps your metabolic rate up a little bit. Again, to help with keeping your metabolic rate up a little bit, you could do a blend of rosemary with green tea. Topically, rosemary is wonderful for the scalp and hair. I have read many times of traditional uses in using it as a hair rinse to keep dark hair dark, so to help prevent graying. But it also stimulates the hair follicles and helps maintain good hair growth. If I was gonna use it in that way as a hair rinse, what I would do is make a strong rosemary tea and keep it in the shower. And again, you wanna make a, an amount for about three or four days tops because you know this is a fresh product and it doesn't have a preservative in it. So about three, four days tops. I would wash my hair, I would then rinse the shampoo out, and then I would put the rosemary tea all over, you know, on my scalp, let that sit for a couple of minutes, and then move into the conditioning, and then rinse everything out. If you don't use conditioner, then you would just let the rosemary tea sit on your scalp for a few minutes while you're, you know, washing your face or something else, and then rinse that off before you get out. 
but a few minutes should be enough for the rosemary tea to soak into your scalp. Wonderful for all types of scalp issues, you know, itchy scalp, promoting hair growth, keeping dark hair dark, um, just, you know, keeping your scalp really healthy. Rosemary is also wonderful for, you know, sprains, strains, arthritis, swollen joints, stiff joints, all of that. Again, I would probably use a topical use in that way. So using the essential oil or doing an oil infusion with rosemary. And here's another specific one. Rosemary is very good for neuralgia and nerve-based pain, so it makes it a perfect one to add to a massage oil or treatment oil for sciatica. In traditional Chinese medicine, it's used a lot to warm the spirit, open and uplift the heart and mind. So again, kind of really bringing that energy up and brightening your mind, brightening your spirit. And as I said before, it, it's pretty obvious because you, you can get those feelings just from smelling the plants. Rosemary also makes a really nice natural preservative for food and products. And you can buy typically the oleo resin of rosemary if you want something that's pre-made or just a nice thing to add to your own home recipes for food preservation and canning. The essential oil is wonderful. We spoke about some of its properties already, but for uplifting and stimulating the mind, it's really good to reduce brain fog. Definite essential oil to have around if you spend long hours at the computer working. You can just add a little to your temples, you can add a little to your throat so that you get that essential oil wafting up. Essential oils, you always want to breathe in through the nose. The nose is the fastest pathway for essential oils to get to the brain. So whenever you're using them, try to keep that in mind. Breathe in through the nose. The essential oil of rosemary is also really good for exhaustion, asthma, bronchitis. You can use it to treat or add it to an oil blend for various skin infections and skin irritations. The essential oil is great for hair and scalp health. So again, you could use the whole herb in a tea infusion like we just talked about, or you could do the pure essential oil of rosemary, in which case you could add it to your shampoo. You could add it to a little oil that you just add drops to your scalp and massage in. Uh, there's various ways to use it that way. Rosemary essential oil is not recommended during the first four months of pregnancy, or if you have a difficult pregnancy, so that is something to keep in mind. 